Hello guys, welcome to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Sol and those of you who do, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I achieved this look. So if you're interested, keep watching. So I start off by moisturizing my skin and I'm using AHC Hyaluronic Emulsion. And I've also applied some primer and then we go to my Anastasia Beverly Hills contour cream kit and I'm using the warm coral and I apply that tend to apply it under my eyes and on any red and uneven patches that I may have so that includes in between my eyebrows where my glabella complex is, I have a little red birthmark which flares up a little more when I'm either hot or a little emotional or laughing a little too hard so I tend to do that and then I'll do the corners of my nose because they just tend to be a little red from all the little capillaries there and just the corners of my lips as well so I cover those all up with the warm coral before applying my foundation so then I go in with actually a concealer not foundation I wanted to try things differently today and I'm using the Maybelline instant anti-aging eraser and I use 01 which is light and I apply my concealer under my eyes around the nose my glabella complex over my nose and I tend to apply a generous amount Woo Done. That's a good look there for you, isn't it? Brilliant. <laughs> so then we blend in the concealer. Don't forget to wash your blender and make sure that it's moist prior to using it. And it's just a light dabbing. So this usually takes me quite a little while to do because of the dabbing. Okay, you have to be careful to use it appropriately otherwise it can age your skin. So then we go in with the Fenty Beauty foundation. It's the Pro Filter and it's in shade 290. And then we use the Defined Buffer Brush 103 to buff that into the skin. And I try and do under my chin as well because I don't like that defined line that you get between foundation and no foundation. I like it to blend in quite naturally with the rest of my skin. So in this look, I'm actually doing a no eyeshadow look and the look is actually quite focused purely on the mascara. So I've got foundation on my eyes and under my eyes and over my eyelids. And then we're going back in with the contour cream kit from Anastasia and I'm using chocolate try and get it as symmetrical as you possibly can guys just to clarify I am by no means a makeup artist these are just what I do and how I apply my makeup so I don't know if it's right I just know I think I know that it works for my skin and my face shape so please don't judge 
So if you're going to judge, judge kindly. At the beginning when I started contouring, I really could not do my nose properly and I think I was the only person with a small nose that would end up contouring and then would end up with a larger nose. I don't know how I managed to do my that. My eyes are quite hooded so if I'm not doing eye makeup and on most days when I go to work I don't apply much eyeshadow, like literally no eyeshadow you'll see whatsoever. So I just go in with the contour, with the chocolate contour from the contour cream kit and I just apply that into the crease of my eye. But that's only because my eyes are quite hooded. And then I just blend that in. I've realized now doing the voiceover to this video that there's a lot of blending involved in makeup. Back in the day it literally was apply it on with your mate with your fingers, rub it in with your fingers and voila you were done. Can you hear my birds in the background? I mean, they're liking this music. <laughs> Loads of you have been asking me about the birds and how I feel about having caged animals. I don't like the fact that they're caged. It does upset me. As soon as I do come home, their cage has got um, almost like a handle that comes up on top. Oh. Here I'm showing you the blusher that I'm using and I am using, sorry not blusher, it's the Sculpting Bronzer Limited Edition Shade 29 from Esther Lauder and I just apply that in that hood of the eye. And then just going in for a little more, removing the excess. and then on the other eye as well so as with the birds their cage has a few doors and I tend to leave them open so that they can come out and go back in they don't tend to come out which is sad so initially I think I was chasing them out of the cage and I just thought oh my god that's so cruel so now I just leave it open. If they like to come out, they come out. But it's not often that they do. They need a lot more cleaning than you think. Like a lot more. But no, it does upset me that they're caged. Okay, and now guys, I'm applying the rosy glow to the apples of my cheek. That's it. Just a little. I don't like excessive amounts of um, blusher. And now I'm using the Maya Baker's Glam, it's called Glamazon and it's a cream highlighter and it's shade 2, Amber Lights it's called. With this cream highlighter, um, it's not the best highlight, the best one that I've used. It's okay. Um, 
I think one of the best ones I've used is a uh, Kylie Jenner one. Her highlighters are really good. I did order some stuff from Kylie Jenner over a month ago and I've yet to receive them. I've emailed just saying, yeah, I've not received them yet. But I've yet to receive an email back. Initially, they did send me a little email to say, we've not forgotten about you, but nothing since. So I like to get my Cupid's bow done as well. And that little tip of my nose. And most times I like to do the corners of my eyes going towards my nose. And it's just because I feel that it makes my eyes look a little bigger, if that makes sense. Like the shape look bigger. Because my eyes are rather almond shaped, so they're not too big, not like Sabine Sinus, There's, their eyes are massive. That's it. So now I'm doing my eyebrows and this is something that I've touched on on the previous video, the eyebrow kit that I use. So I brush my eyebrows first. And then I'll go in with, it's called a colour kit. You have to be careful with these. They are stage makeup. They do last such a long while. But they're stage makeup so they're quite strong. So you can't be heavy handed with them when you use them. Practice them a little. But they're fantastic. They're really good. A few years ago, I went very, very thin with my eyebrows, like ridiculously thin, but that was fashionable back then. But it literally looked like I had two thin pieces of string as eyebrows. I thought they looked okay on me at the time, but looking back at pictures, maybe not. Maybe not. I've noticed how my concentration face does not look as bad as the previous videos. When I was looking at the Botox video, my concentration face on that was not amazing. So as you can see, I've got a high low. One eyebrow is a little higher than the other and the other one's a lo lower, obviously. So I try and match it. There, I think maybe in my lifetime a few times have they been even, usually they're not. So, And I joke about it saying that my eyebrows are sisters and they're not twins. But there are times where they're not even that, they're cousins. So. I find that bigger, thicker eyebrows make you look younger and thinner ones make you look older. Let me know if you agree or not. Guys, what did you think of my ASMR video? I'd really like some feedback on that. I think initially when I was doing it, I did some research on videos that people had done and where I kept listening to them. So that one's looking a little higher there, so I'll fix it. Uh, so when I was listening to them, when I went back to listening to normal videos, it felt like they were almost screaming in comparison. So I'm at work five days a week at the minute. I don't, I've mentioned it previously. So on most days I'm triaging, which means that patients will call in with two fake or questions and we answer them. On different days I've been doing mass fit tests for NHS staff. And this is when we fit masks on them and make sure that the mask fits their face size and we sometimes even practice wearing a mask with them and then show them how appropriately to wear it. 
the best mask I've seen where it doesn't have a failure rate at all it's the Alpha Solway 3030V so I don't actually have one myself but I know you can purchase them from Screwfix for a pack of five for under £25 and they're brilliant they do not fail at all they're the best ones so if you're looking for a mask those are the ones to purchase so here guys I'm using Maybelline New York the colossal 100% black mascara and I tend to apply if I'm doing heavy mascara I tend to apply my lower lashes first and then I go on to my top ones but I'll do the lower lash on one eye first then the lower lash on the other and then my top lashes but my mascara is what takes the longest in my makeup When I was 17, I, my friend Jessica, so I was curling my lashes and she jumped on me whilst the eyelash curler was on my eye. She didn't do it intentionally, obviously, but she jumped on me, pulled my hand and I pulled the eyelash curler away from my lashes to see that well obviously it was yanked away and it hurt so bad and it literally had all my lashes in a row on this eyelash curler it looked like I had false lashes like a strip false lash stuck to this eyelash curler it hurt so bad and it was just I looked awful. I looked really ill. Really, really ill. I looked, I think a few people said that I looked like a cancer patient. Like I'd had chemotherapy. It looked awful. So when doing my top lashes, initially I go down with the brush. So I'll do the top of the lashes first and then I'll do the bottom so you'll see it when I'll do the next eye where I'll go down the lashes first so I'll do the top lashes first and then do the bottom ones and I try and ensure that they don't stick together that's why I allow them to dry after the first coat this is what I mean about doing downward strokes so doing the top of the lashes first and this just makes them look a lot thicker because then you've got both the top and the bottom covered because most people just go up with the mascara So the piercing you see on my left hand side on my ear, I ripped by mistake. So I had a piercing on that ear and it got caught in my scarf and it ripped. And because it's a cartilage, it hurt. It really did hurt incredibly. 
is very painful. And then I've got the forward helix done as well, you can see that. So after I've done my first coating of the mascara, I then go back for the second coating. And for the bottom lashes, I try and hold the mascara one differently. So I hold it facing my eye instead of horizontal to parallel to it so because it's facing my eye you have to be a lot more careful well I say that by looking at the video it looks like I alternate between the two uh, but the second time you go around with it after it's dried after the first coat it's just to add thickness and also length I really like that twiggy eye makeup I don't know if you know the one I'm talking about you know the thick full mascara like lumps of mascara I really like that I remember I think it was late teens early 20s I'd gone on a date with no not late teens it must have been early 20s I'd gone on a date and someone had said oh no, maybe mid-twenties even. Okay, it doesn't matter. At one point in my life, I had gone on a date. And the guy said, Your eyelashes look like spiders. Why do you have them like spiders? And I remember thinking, Oh my God, it took me so long. They were really wasted on you. <laughs> like, what do you mean they look like spiders? They don't look like spiders at all. So then my mascara takes the longest, as I mentioned. So I usually do two to three coats of mascara. If I'm wearing false lashes though, I tend not to do too much on top you see me wearing here was a gift from my grandma and the thumb ring I'm wearing it was a gift from Sina I think a few of you have asked me I think she got me that from Dubai about three four years ago And this is the third coat of the mascara, I think. Mm. So guys, I just finished watching on Orthodox and I thought it was a fantastic 
What a good watch. Netflix has been really good recently. Like, has really made a lockdown for me. There's really some amazing stuff from Netflix. So now I'm going to go in where, for my lips and I'm using a lip pencil and it's called uh, Boldly Bear by Matt. I'm in two minds about fillers for lips. I think for some people they look amazing and I think others they just should not have it done. I mean if you could do without it you shouldn't have it done. <laughs> so I tend to use a combination of lip liners so now I've gone back in with the second one this one's a NYX one I think it's NYX London this one And I use the different shades to contour my lips. And now I'm going to go in with a little lipstick and I'm using Estee Lauder Pure Color MV in shade Dynamic, which is a 410. And now to finish it off, I'm using the Sculpting Bronzer. And I tend to just bronze my entire face, going over everywhere that I have contoured. And here's the final product. I hope you guys like it. Guys, here's the makeup in decent lighting, better lighting anyway. I hope you've liked this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos from myself. Sending you all a lot of love. Bye.